Okay, so this is a short video on router on a stick and micro tick. So I've seen a few posts lately uh, on Reddit about people asking about how to configure their micro tick device as a router on a stick. And by the term router on a stick, what we mean is when you have a router here, which has effectively one interface, and this is uh, three different VLANs on the one interface, and this interface is trunked. So this is physically one port on the router, but I'm marking it with three lines here to show the three different VLANs which are inside that trunk. And the little ellipse here shows that they're all bound together. So in this router on a switch design, uh, router on a stick design, so in this router on a stick design, what happens is to communicate between VLAN 1 and say VLAN 2 or VLAN 3, our traffic goes up into the switch, up to the router, gets routed to VLAN 2, and then back down the same interface and out to one of these other interfaces on the switch. And it's called router on a stick because it looks like the router here is sitting on a stick. So people ask, how do we make that work in MicroTIC? How do I create a MicroTIC router on a stick? Well, let's take a look at this uh, block diagram from the MicroTIC website for an RB4011. So you may not think of it like this, but this box, this entire diagram is everything inside the RB4011 chassis. And if I turn this upside down, let's have a look and see what it looks like. Okay, so I've just jumped into photo editor here. So here's the diagram, the block diagram of the RB4011. And uh, here is our router. Okay, so jumping back to that diagram. Let's edit this diagram. Let's... Uh, do a bit of a crop here. What should we do? Crop and rotate. Okay, so yeah, it's upside down. I was going to save this diagram. Okay, it's upside down and it's hard to read. But uh, now let's jump back to our router diagram. Okay, so I've got a router at the top. Oh, look, there's a CPU at the top here. And then I have a trunk interface down to a switch. Oh, look. Here's a trunk interface down to a switch. Well, actually, on the RB4 on one, I have another trunk interface down to another switch and another trunk interface down to a single port. Uh, but yeah, this is basically the same thing inside the box, but it's basically a router on a stick inside the case. So MicroTIC is router on a stick. This is the same diagram as our logical diagram, but drawn in the view of basically what's inside the RB4011 case. And we have the CPU with a high-speed interface going down to a switch, which has multiple ports. So let's jump back to the readable version of that image and uh, see what that looks like. So here we are back on the website. So we were saying MicroTIC router on a stick has a high-speed trunk port to a switch with multiple ports. And that is exactly what is inside this MicroTIG router. So you already have a router on a stick whether you've configured one or not. As soon as you have each interface of your MicroTIG having a different IP address on it or a different IP subnet on that interface, then you've immediately created a router on a stick. And the way that MicroTIC does it internally and invisibly to you is that this interface between the CPU core and the switch itself is essentially a VLAN trunk, but you don't know that. It's an invisible VLAN trunk. So you may not have configured VLANs. You may have just said Ethernet 6 is my internet link and Ethernet 7 is my LAN and Ethernet 8 is my, I don't know, IoT network and Ethernet 9 is for guests and they're all different subnets. What's actually happening is they're actually all different VLANs and that traffic is being trunked, VLAN trunked up this two and a half gigabit per second uh, link. Now, why is this link two and a half gigabit per second? Well, it's just the fact that the RTL8367 switch 
if you look at the hardware specs for this, you can get these switches um, in various flavors, but the one which Microtech has purchased has the five uh, gigabit ports and it has you know one two and a half gigabit per second port. And it's not actually called a two and a half gigabit per second port, it's called a PHY. So it has a two and a half gigabit per second PHY, um, which connects into the CPU. Okay, now what if you want to actually make your MicroTik RV4011 connect to another switch with way more ports and do an actual physical uh, router on a stick, much like the router example here. So imagine this is your RV4011 and you want to use, say, the 10 gigabit per second interface, uh, ignoring the fact that the router has 10 other ports and you want to use that 10 gigabit per second interface on the Microtik RB4011 as your stick part of the router on a stick and use something like a CRS326 or 328 or CSS326, for example, as your switch and want to do it that way. How would we do that? All right, so here we have what it looks like with our RB4011 when we go to a physical design. So, at the top is our physical RB4011 router, and we're gonna be using the 10 gigabit per second SFP plus one interface to connect to a CRS326 switch. This could be a CSS326, but I'm using a CRS because we can actually use router OS configuration syntax in my example configs for both these devices. So we have VLAN 1, VLAN 10, and VLAN 12. And if communicating between VLAN 1 and any other VLAN, I want to go up to the switch, up to the router and back. And between 12 and 10 or 12 and 1, it's the same kind of thing. You go up to the switch, up to the router, get transferred to the router to the other VLAN, back down the switch and back out that uh, one of those ports. Let's have a look at the config. Okay, so let's zoom in here and talk about this config. So the first thing we're going to be doing on our RB4011 is configuring our bridge. This is the easiest way to do this. Look how many lines there are. There's like eight lines of config. So we create a bridge and we allow that bridge to perform uh, VLAN filtering, which basically means that packets coming up into the software bridge can be VLAN tagged and it knows how to strip and add VLAN tags, which it then forwards on to the routing engine. We're adding the 10 gigabit port to the bridge and only this port at the moment for simplicity's sake. Uh, then what we're doing is we're saying that on SFPP, the 10 gigabit port, sorry, that we're having VLANs 12 and 10 are tagged. Now in this design, we also have VLAN 1 and we're not tagging this. So I don't need to define the untagged VLAN as having a number. It is just inherently one because it's not tagged, right? It's, it's as simple as we need to get for this. Then we're adding addresses uh, to the router for these VLANs. So what we're saying here is we're adding a VLAN interface type on the bridge with a name of VLAN 10 and giving it a VLAN ID. So the IP address for VLAN 10 can then be assigned. So that's what we have down here, right? So we're giving VLAN 10 an IP address of 192.168.10.254. So what's going to happen there is when packets come up the 10 gigabit port and are tagged with VLAN 10, when it hits the bridge, the bridge is going to remove that VLAN tag, but it's also going to be forwarding it to this uh, uh, IP interface for the purposes of routing. Same thing goes for VLAN 1, same thing goes for VLAN 12. Now, of course, VLAN 1 uh, doesn't have anything to find other than bridge, because if a packet comes into the bridge with no VLAN tag, it's on VLAN 1. That's it for the RB4011 config. It's literally as simple as that. Now let's zoom into the config for the CRS and have a look at that guy.
So the first thing we do on the CRS is we do create a bridge interface and enable bridge VLAN filtering. So if you're a CRS uh, 3 series aficionado, you'll know that this does all of the VLAN filtering in hardware, which on this particular device is important because it has 24 ports. So what I wanna show you in regards to that is any port here which has no PVID listed uh, is in VLAN one. So ether two, five, six, seven, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They're all in VLAN one. Now, if I was communicating between VLAN, uh, sorry, interface seven and ether interface 12, what we want to do is have that traffic not go up to the CPU. And unique to the CRS three series is the fact that even when you define bridge VLAN filtering here, it actually still does all the VLAN switching in hardware. So you're not actually touching the CPU and that's unique to the CRS three series. So this is fine. We're, we're totally fine with doing that. So the bridge is defined and then we're saying on the bridge, add all these ports to the bridge. And by the way, we want these ports to be untagged, but be in VLAN 10. And we want these ports to be untagged and be in VLAN 12. So anything plugged into ethers 17 through 20 is gonna be on VLAN 12. And then if a device on that port wants to communicate to a device in VLAN one, what's going to happen is it's gonna come in that port. It's going to be sent up the uh, SFP port up to the router, get routed back to VLAN one, come back down that link and then hit the target port. So for example, if we want ether 17, we wanted to communicate on a different VLAN to a device that happened to be on ether 9, what's going to happen is it's going to go from ether 17 to SFP plus one, which is a 10 gig interface on the CRS 326. It's going to go up to the router and going to come back down after being routed. And then it'll go from this port and it'll go to ether 9. I think I said nine, didn't I, in my example. If I said seven, you know what I mean. So what we're now saying is on the bridge, we want these ports, if it's on VLAN 10, to be tagged. And so what we're saying is, when you're communicating on VLAN 10, up the 10 gig interface on VLAN 10 or VLAN 12 actually, tag the packet, okay? So basically, if we're talking from Ether 17 and we want to route across to that other VLAN to Ether 9, all right? What's going to happen is, as we said, the packet goes from Ether 17, it goes to the 10 gig interface, right, and gets sent up to the RB4011. But because that's a trunk interface, it needs to be tagged. And let's look at that here. So what we have is we have a device on VLAN 12. Let's say, that, I think that was port 17 wanting to communicate to a device on VLAN 1 that's on Ether 9. So the packet comes up the port here untagged, hits the switch. The switch needs to send it to the router to get across to the other VLAN, but it knows that it has to tag that because this port, SFP plus 1, is a trunk port. So it tags the packet now with VLAN 12, sends it up to the router. The router routes the packet into VLAN one. Now we know that VLAN one on this interface on the router is untagged. So the packet comes back down the same interface, the 10 gig interface, SFP plus one on the switch with no tag. And the switch knows that uh, the device with that specific MAC address, which is being targeted is on ether nine, and it can send that packet back out to that port that's going into ether nine in that VLAN. So I would like to address um, people here who have a concern about this particular line. Uh, sorry, bridge VLAN filtering equals yes on the RB4011. People are gonna say that bridge VLAN filtering in software is very slow and you shouldn't do it, yada, yada, yada. Okay, well, let's just jump over to our diagram here. Okay, so bridge VLAN filtering is indeed slow if you are communicating between ports on the same VLAN when the device has to switch between those ports in software. So let's have a look at uh, this example. So if I'm on uh, Ethernet 6 um, on 
this RB4011, and I have a device on Ethernet 7 that's in the same VLAN. The way that this specific hardware works is in order for me to communicate from here to this port, I have to go in, up to the switch, up to the bridge, the software bridge, and then get routed, uh, switched or, or filtered, sorry. I have to get bridged back down that port into the switch and out. Uh, and so while these are two one gig ports and this is two and a half gig, if I have all five ports doing that for five gigabits a second, I hit a bottleneck here, all right? That's a bad thing. We don't want to do that. So bridge VLAN filtering in software, yeah, sure. It's a bad idea if you're trying to communicate between ports on the same VLAN. But when I am not communicating between ports on the same VLAN, there is absolutely no difference between coming up this interface on VLAN 12, up this interface on VLAN 12, then being routed to VLAN 1 and coming down the same interface, right? I am still traversing up to the CPU and back down again. I have to, I'm being routed. There's no other way around this. So this example more closely resembles if I've got two different ports on a switch hanging off the 10 gigabit port coming up the 10 gig, getting routed to a different VLAN and back down again. It wouldn't matter whether your hardware supported bridge VLAN filtering in hardware or not. It's irrelevant because you're being routed up to the CPU. So for anyone who has a problem with this configuration setting about bridging being in software, I'm trying to reiterate to you, it is irrelevant when you are doing routing. Okay, now that we've got that out of the way, let's sort of wrap this up and jump back down to our diagram so we can just again visualize what we've done. We have our router on a stick connecting to our CRS326 with anywhere between you know six and 24 devices configured on two VLANs, three VLANs, 10 VLANs, all working with very little configuration. If we jump back into our configuration example here and we only want to describe uh, a, a small handful of ports which are being configured, let's just remove all these for the sake of brevity. Let's say I'm only really using devices on these ports on the switch. You can see just how simple this configuration is. It is not a complex uh, list of commands. It's like 20 lines of code, if, if that. And I like to show things in the uh, command line because it's much easier to see the consistency of configuration rather than trying to show it in Winbox or in the web GUI. But that's it. I hope you found it fairly simple in understanding how to do routing on a stick with your, with your MicroTik router. And to remember that the difference between the concept of routing on a stick and what actually happens inside a MicroTik router are fundamentally very similar. So there's no issue with doing router on a stick on a MicroTik because underneath the covers, that's exactly what it's doing for you in the first place.